So um, <laughs> obviously some people didn't understand the video I just uploaded. So I'm going to uh, try to explain it in a little bit more detail. Okay, Using a thought experiment. So here's the thought experiment. Let's say you were in charge of a mission to populate another planet. Let's say you were going with you know, about 10 people to another planet. The planet is just like Earth was 20 million years ago. The biology is not toxic to you. You can eat the animals. You can eat some of the plants. So it's just like Earth, except 20 million years ago, before humans. And you can bring anything you want with you. But it has to fit into, say, six shipping containers. Okay, you can't bring the entire Earth's biosphere, stick it in a suitcase and bring it. But you can bring all the knowledge of humanity. You can have a computer with a bunch of hard disks and pack all the knowledge of humanity into that computer. Okay. You can also bring seeds. You can bring domesticated animals. You can bring guns. Whatever you want. It just has to be able to fit into some reasonable number of storage containers. Okay. And I don't know how big a shipping container is, but you've probably seen them on trucks or on trains or on boats. They're pretty big, so you can bring a lot of stuff. Now the question is, would you be able to recreate a complex technological society like the one we have on Earth today? So that's what I want you to try and think through, how you would do that. And think through it carefully. Think through the details. Okay. I'm going to give you my answer now, which will probably bias you. But if you think you can come up with a better answer, then go ahead. So my answer is no, or at least it would take thousands of years to get to the kind of complex technological society and economy that we have today on Earth. And here's why. Complex technology depends on a large-scale complex economy. It does not just depend on us having the knowledge of how to make it. The reason why cavemen didn't have guns is partly because they didn't know how to make them. But it's also partly because making a gun would have been much less efficient than just using a spear. Now, why is that? Well, if you had to build a gun from scratch using Stone Age technology, if you were back 10,000 years ago and you had to build a gun, it would require an enormous amount of effort like an entire lifetime and you would be lucky to get even a really shitty gun that works after a lifetime of effort. So here's why. Making a gun requires that you have some kind of reasonably high quality metal, right? I guess it could be brass or steel. Um, let's say it's steel, okay? Making steel is not easy. It's not too hard to find iron ore on the surface of a planet, but Smelting it is not easy. Uh, you first have to make charcoal, and then you have to create very, very hot charcoal fire to melt the iron ore. It requires a fair bit of work. Okay, but then I'm not even sure how you make steel. And blacksmithing is not easy. If you've ever done even a little bit of it in shop class or something, you know that it's not easy. Okay, so you have to make steel, right? You have to make gunpowder. So how do you do that? Well, you have to find deposits of potassium nitrate and sulfur. And you mix that with charcoal, and that makes black powder. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, you have to first prospect for those minerals. And then you have to develop uh, mines. You have to mine them right, in sufficient quantity. You have to find deposits and then get enough of them to make it usable and separate them from whatever materials they're found with. So altogether, you have to develop three mines, right? One for iron ore, one for potassium nitrate, and one for sulfur. Well, you also need a mine for lead because you have to make bullets, right? You, you need lead to make bullets or silver, maybe gold, right? But you need something. Okay, uh, let's say it's a flintlock. Well, then you need flint as well. So you have to have a fifth mine, right? Are we up to five now? And how do you mine stuff? You need tools. What are tools made from? Well. Iron. <laughs> you need to make iron pickaxes and shovels. 
that kind of sucks. You have to find some iron ore that you can like pick up with your hands. Then you have to smelt it. Then you have to make it into mining tools. Then you have to mine the other stuff you need, including more iron ore, to make your gun. Right? So once you get all this stuff, you're probably into your fourth decade of life by the time you've got all the stuff. I mean, you've already gone through several careers, right? You've been a prospector. You've been a miner. I mean, you had to support yourself, too. So you've probably been a hunter, a gatherer, or whatever. You've been a blacksmith. So now you've got your stuff, right? Now you have to put it together. Well, some of the components are fairly precise. You have to bore out the barrel of the gun. How do you bore out the barrel of a gun? It requires machinery, right? Boring out barrels requires some kind of boring machine. <laughs> Maybe you can try casting it in that form. That's not easy, and it's probably just going to blow apart. So, so maybe you have to build the machine to bore it. You have to build a machine to make a gun. You have to build the trigger mechanism, the thing that strikes the flint. And that is precise work. That's not easy. Little nails, little screws to put everything together. So by the time you get this job done, you've got a really shitty flint lock and you spent like half your life, or maybe your entire life, to make it. And in the meantime, your buddies were out hunting mammoths, you know, feasting on delicious uh, mammoth meat and fucking all the hot chicks. And you were this loser <laughs> roaming around in the forest looking for potassium nitrate. Uh, it's not a good way to live. You, you'll, you'll go down in history as that crazy guy. <laughs> so... A technology is energy efficient only when there is a big enough demand so that you can mass produce it at a cost that is lower than the benefits that it provides. So in that example, to make one gun is just not worth the effort. If you had a gun factory and you had a market that you could sell the guns into, then it might be worth investing in doing that. But you'd need to get together with a bunch of other people and form one of those evil, greedy corporations and start producing them. But you need a huge market to sell into. But the other thing you would need, really, to produce something like a gun efficiently is that the components and materials that are necessary to produce it are already themselves being produced efficiently. You know, if you're going to go into the gun business, you've got to have a supplier of steel. You've got to have a supplier of gunpowder, of lead, of machinery or whatever, you've got to be able to outsource. Um, if you have to do everything yourself, it's going to be really expensive. And that might make the gun too expensive, right? Just not worth it. Technological complexity emerges by a virtuous cycle where technology begets technology. The more things are being produced, the more new things you can produce using the things that are already being produced. So, for example, if I want to build a new computerized gadget of some kind, like, you know, a new iPhone or something, I don't need to make computer chips myself, right? I can order them from a chip supplier. I don't need to make the plastic case myself. I can get that produced by a plastic factory. I don't need to make the tiny screws that hold everything together. I'll just order those from a hardware supplier. Right? There's got to be a factory out there that makes screws and bolts and things like that. I'll put in an order. They'll ship them to me. The same goes for the wires. Right? I'll have to wire it. I'll need a circuit board. Well, I'll order that up from the circuit board factory. The display. Oh, well, I'll send away an order to the display factory. The fact that all these things are already being produced and being produced efficiently means I can buy them relatively cheaply, put them together, and produce a new technology efficiently and cheaply enough that I can sell it, right? That people are willing to buy it. So to produce something efficiently, there have to be two conditions. One is that I can sell enough of the product to justify the capital investment. There's no point building a factory to make one gun. But if you're making a million guns or a hundred million guns, then it might be worth it. The second condition is that I can buy the inputs to the production process at reasonable prices, usually from existing suppliers, because that will keep my production costs low. You know, if I have to produce everything myself, 
my production costs are going to be high, or I have to build factories for each of those things to produce them at a low cost. And it might not be worth you know, building a screw factory right, just so I can sell my gadget. It's worth it if I can buy the screws from an existing factory. But if I have to build a factory to produce screws just so I can build a gadget that I'm going to sell to a million people, it's probably not worth it. So each new technology kind of piggybacks on existing technologies. And it piggybacks on existing production processes. You can only produce a complex technology if you already have a large-scale complex economy. A caveman cannot produce a complex technology even if he knows exactly how to do it because he cannot do it efficiently. And so that's why you would not be able to recreate our complex technological society on that alien planet even if you had all the knowledge of humanity with you and plenty of starter capital, right? You could pack an entire factory into those shipping containers, but it wouldn't matter. You're not going to have a screw factory and a wire factory. You're not going to have a copper mine in there. You're not going to have a blacksmith shop in there, right? You can't have all that stuff in there. So to get there, you would have to go through the same stages that our ancestors did here on Earth, right? You would have to go through the hunter-gatherer stage, the village agriculturalist or herder stage, then the agricultural civilization stage, uh, and so on, and eventually get to industrial civilization. You'd have to build up the population and the economy, and you'd have to build up the scale of the economy, and that would require political innovations to bring about large-scale exchange. The whole thing would take thousands of years, as it did on Earth. You couldn't just recreate it because you had the knowledge. The knowledge is not enough. Okay, so now in my previous video, I made the point that industrial civilization was created with the energy from fossil fuels. Capital is stored energy. So a complex economy requires a large input of energy. To extract the remaining fossil fuel reserves requires complex technology. Complex technology requires a complex economy. So the virtuous cycle becomes a vicious circle that we won't be able to bootstrap, right? We were able to bootstrap ourselves to this level of civilization because there were easily accessible sources of fossil fuel energy at the surface that could be mined with simple technology. But that's no longer the case. That was a one-shot deal. We're not going to be able to do that again. So if our civilization does collapse for any reason, it could have nothing to do with energy. It could be due to a breakdown of the social order. It doesn't matter. If our civilization collapses, we will no longer have the complex economy necessary to create and maintain the complex technology necessary to extract the energy necessary to create a complex economy. Okay, there's no way to bootstrap that cycle on this planet, at least that I can think of. Anyway, so uh, that's one very good reason not to fuck up our civilization and not to root for the collapse.